sometimes playing a huge venue means the sound is very dry, where you hit it and it has nothing to bounce off of. So it's just like... <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe just advertising, you know, our nerdiness, but I mean, I think that's the kind of thing that we end up feeling like we have to prepare for the most. It's like, mm. what is it going to sound like there? And so in a place that's very echoey, I always feel like the challenge is to try and play less, which is very difficult for me because I'm kind of a spaz and I'm, I'm always filling up little spaces, you know, and I, I want to, when it's echoey, I want to try and, you know, play a note, have, give it some time to echo through the space and then, and then play the next note. And in places that are drier or deader sounding, you can get away with playing faster and, and it still sounds cool or whatever. Our default mode, which I would imagine anybody's default mode, would be would, to be listening as hard as we can to everybody else. And that doesn't necessarily mean play the same thing they're playing, it just means um, it's like a conversation, you know? that doesn't mean we're speaking at the same time. It doesn't mean we speak in the same tone of voice or in the same style. Or we have the same way that we like to use words or the same syntax, you know, that we like to form our sentences with. I don't have that maturity where I can control the amount of myself that I'm putting into the music, either I do or don't, kind of thing. Sometimes we sit down and say, what would it be like if we just, everybody had their part and they just play it straight through and don't change anything that you're doing as a result of anything that you hear coming from anyone else. We can't really do it, but when we try, we get really depressed. Ed and John have played together, actually, for many years. Hmm. Um, just not in Deer Hope. They know each other really well on guitars, but they both seem to have this same distinctive thing. It's very weird. And uh, when they play together, it's, it can feel like they become one guitar. They become one big guitar that has 12 strings and can play really um, types of chords that you can't play on one guitar um, because it's too many notes, you know, it's like, uh, you know, to quote Amadeus or whatever. <laughs> I mean, trying to compare Ed and Chris is like, uh, <laughs> Chris had this amazing, I mean, I loved playing with it, but it was also like, sometimes I, I felt like my head was going to explode or something. He had this way of playing always behind. He was just always <laughs> behind the beat. And it was as if you were doing, you were like experiencing two experiences of time at the same time and just be off, 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 and just, the two of us, we just never minded never locking up. Ed's like just the opposite, he's like, he's like kind of always ahead. He's really, he has this incredibly um, energetic and kind of eager um, personality that comes across when he's, when he's performing and when he's got a guitar in his hands. It just feels like a totally different band to me when you're playing, when you're trying to work it out when I'm playing with Ed than when I'm not playing with Ed, you know. He brings something different out of me, that's the fun of it, you know. Maybe somewhat in rock music in general, but definitely in Deerhoof, we have absolutely no idea what the rules are or any idea of what we're supposed to be doing. Nobody told us how to, to play Deerhoof music, and, but when we play with other people, same story. We don't have any common denominator, or common language, or common basis to, to build anything from. Um, I would never want to compare our music to jazz because it doesn't, it's not learned. 
Of course, there's nothing that says that rock and roll has to not have, or pop, or whatever you want to call it, necessarily must exclude training. You know, you think of Paul McCartney as such a great example of someone who never had any training, can't read music, but his music sounds so classical a lot of times, yeah. you know, because he listens to classical music, and he likes it. Pop music is not a sound. Pop music is almost by definition not a sound. It's, it's because it changes so fast. It's trendy. Basically what pop music is is trendy music. Music that kids like. The music that kids get excited about. And, I mean, nobody knows what a kid is going to get excited about tomorrow. So that's why it's exciting as a genre. Do I always sort of thought of our music... <laughs> In my mind, I always thought of it as pop because I always basically wanted to make something that kids would like or that would connect to them in some way.